the Avondale Presbyterian Church on this Pentecost Sunday and this Memorial Day weekend. We are certainly grateful that you are here. If you're worshiping with us online or whether you're here in person, we want to say a particular word of welcome to you. And hopefully uh, you'll notice that there are QR codes on either end of the entrance of the FLC. That is a way that you can go to our website and you can follow all the different events that are going on in the life of the church. You can also find our liturgy and our online giving there. So it's just a wonderful way to learn about all the different things going on in the life of the church. We also wanted to make sure you are aware that we have been having some difficulties with our Wi-Fi connection here in the FLC for the last several weeks, which has made it challenging to live stream our worship service. So unfortunately, the issue is not one that we can easily resolve. So starting today, we will be recording and then uploading our service to our YouTube channel, where it will be available at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sundays. For the next three weeks, our weekly worship email will also go out at 1 p.m. on Sundays. But beginning on Sunday, June 18th, you can either go directly to our YouTube channel for worship or you can follow the links to our YouTube channel and our bulletin. They can be found in our weekly e-news, which goes out every Wednesday. If you have any questions about how to access our worship online, you can email Amanda in our office or you can give us a call during our office hours and we'd be happy to help you out and figure that out with you. And then just a reminder that we will be briefly recognizing our graduates in worship on Sunday, June the 11th. If you are a graduate or if you have a graduate in your household, don't forget to send a photo and a few details to Amanda in the church office at communications at avondalepresbychurch.org. We, as a community, we certainly want to celebrate with you and pray for you as you discern your next steps. And then finally, this being a holiday weekend, we just want to make sure you are, know that our church office will be closed tomorrow in honor of Memorial Day. Those are all the announcements that we have at this time. So let us come together for the reason we have gathered, and that's to worship our Lord. Won't you join me as we offer together the call to worship you find before you? We come into God's presence this day through the power of the Holy, God's Holy Spirit. Holy, Holy Spirit of God, you come like the wind of heaven, unseen, unbidden. Holy Spirit of God, you give us courage and fire and strength, renewing our world with grace and hope. Come, Holy Spirit, let us worship God. I invite you to join me as we stand in posture or in spirit as we offer together our song of praise. May the people praise you. Or Holy Spirit rain down. Spirit rain. 
seated. My friends, if we say that we have no sin, then we're not being honest. We're not being open about our lives, about the world around us. But if we confess our sins, and God who is merciful, God who is just, will forgive us of our sins and restore us anew time and time again. So at this time, we invite you to join us as we offer together the prayer of confession, which you'll find before you. But, but then also take a moment for your own silent, your own personal prayers before a gracious and loving God. Let us pray. Almighty God, you poured your spirit upon gathered disciples, creating bold tongues, open ears, and a new community of faith. We confess that we hold back the force of your spirit among us. We do not listen for your word of grace we do not speak your good news of love. We do not live as a people made one in Christ. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Transform our timid lives by the power of your spirit and fill us with the startling desire to be your faithful people, doing your will for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord.
my friends. God has forgiven you and offered you God's healing love. So let our hearts go without fear. Let us accept this free gift, for it is given for you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. This time, we'd like to invite any of our young folks who are with us to come up for our children's moment today. Guten Morgen, mein Freunde. Wie geht's ihr morgen? Ah, er ein gutes Wochenende? Wer weiß, was für ein bestimmter Tag heute für die Kirche ist? Für die Kirche ist? Huh? What? Did you hear my question? Did you hear my question? You hear my question? Did you answer? Do you know my question? No. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was speaking in German. That's right, I was speaking in German, which I am prone to do from time to time. We were speaking in German. And you know that friends who live in Germany, they speak. That's right, they speak German. But our friends in France, they speak French. Our friends in Mexico, they speak Spanish. People all over the world from different countries speak different languages, but it's hard to understand them sometimes if that's not the language that you grew up speaking. So we have things like this book. This book here is a German dictionary. So if I was looking for a word like the church, I would look in here and it says for us, do you know what it says? What the word for church is? Kirche. Kirche. Okay, say that with me. Can you say it? Kirka. That's a fun word to say, isn't it? Kirka means church. And the church today is a, what my question that I asked you in German was what is the special day? What is this special day in the church? Does anybody know? Anybody know what special day it is? Oh, it's right on the tip of your tongues. Do you know? It's why you're wearing the red shirt. It's why you're wearing a red dress. Do you know? Memorial Day is that? Yeah. yeah. You are. You're red. Yeah, right. It is Pentecost. Pentecost is today. And we celebrate because it's the birthday of the church. It's when the Holy Spirit came to all the people. There's all these people. They were in this house. And this wind, big wind came in. And that was the Holy Spirit coming to the people. And suddenly, they were all speaking in different languages that they had grown up speaking. And everybody could understand what each other was saying. It was the miracle of the Holy Spirit translating what they were saying together. And so we celebrate that today is the birthday of the church where we all come together. And it doesn't matter where we're from, it, we all come to understand and to love one another. So do me a favor. Let's turn around and see all our church family friends and let's say happy birthday, church. You want to do that? Yeah. Join me. Okay, here we go. All right. Happy birthday, church. And church, what do you say? Happy birthday. That's right. So happy birthday to the church. It's a big day. So let us fold our hands and let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And thank you for the church. It teaches us of your love. Amen. Good job, everybody. Thank you for coming up, and thank you for helping me to translate and be a part of this today. You can go join Mr. Tony in the back and Mr. Dale, if you'd like, or you can go back to your parents.
Our scripture for today comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Listen for a word from the Lord. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others neared and sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, DJ. If you're a guest with us today, or if you're just coming back from being away, we want to bring you into a conversation that we have been having over the last couple of weeks about being curious. And what we've said is when, when we are children, you know, we, we are curious about all the things that are around us. It is so fun to, to watch a child come out and, and, and see a cricket for the first time and how they will watch the cricket for hours because they're just so curious. But something happens to us as we get older and, and suddenly we're just not as curious about the things that are going on around us. We spend more time thinking about retirement plans and, and mortgages and and medical insurance than we do about being curious about the world that is happening all around us all the time. And so we've, we've had this conversation to, to kind of get us ready for summer, which will be starting here pretty soon. And, and you'll be traveling or, or maybe you'll just be in the backyard grilling. But wherever you are, we want to invite you to be curious about what God has done, what God is doing, what God continues to do in your life and through your life. And so as we go into this time of worship, and hearing God's prayer and God's word for us, let us be just a little curious about what God is doing around us. Would you join me in prayer? Almighty God, on this day where we celebrate your Holy Spirit coming to us, we give thanks that you are a God who is always with us, who is speaking to us, in us, and through us. That you are a God who has created us, who has redeemed us, who has sustained us time and time again. And so may that same Holy Spirit that was with the first disciples, with your first church, may that Holy, same Holy Spirit be with us now as we hear your word. For it's in Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Now at the time that I went to Appalachian, I don't know if they still do this, but, but when I was attending there, we were required to take an art class. Now knowing that my greatest contribution to art is this, I realized that my GPA was in serious trouble. I scanned the semester class register catalog we had for registering for our classes, and my palms were sweating, my heart was racing. Surely there must be some loophole that I can take. And then I saw it in big, bold letters, Art Appreciation 101, <laughs> Friday mornings, 8 a.m. Oh. Now I have to admit, that this was a season of my life when I rarely ever saw 8 a.m., which of course meant getting out of bed at the unholy hour of 7.55 in order to make it all the way across campus to class. But I was willing to make the sacrifice if it meant not having to draw variations of a dog picture for the next three months straight. 
Oh, I'll admit, I was skeptical about the class at first. I remember my parents signing my sister and I up for programs at the Mint Museum when I was a child. We were expected to be quiet, sit still, don't touch anything in the art gallery. So I had to work through some childhood like hangouts at first, but, but I had a great professor that worked hard to make the classes relevant for us. Despite my resistance, I began enjoying learning about various artists and their work and the way they saw life from different perspectives and, and the use of light to, to enhance those, those focal points and their story that they were trying to tell. There was, of course, the Michelangelos and the Da Vinci's that we studied, the Donatello's, but we also learned about Matisse and Goya, Dolly, Picasso, and either, even a guy named Keith Haring, who I think kind of got his start as one of those subway uh, 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 graffiti artists. Uh, that he, he got started that way. And, and when, we, when we got to some of the more abstract folks, the, the Jackson Pollocks and the Mark Rothkos, I have to admit that I struggled. Don't get me wrong, they, they are talented, they're gifted. I think of them as artists. I bet they never had to draw stick figures of dogs. But for me, it just wasn't my style. To me, I found them too messy. It feels like it's all just been kind of thrown together when I would look at their work. Now, I share this story because when we read our text for today, will you get a picture of the start of what we now call the church? It's quite an interesting story, really. The author tells us that, that everyone was gathered in this one place. They were all together when there suddenly was the sound of a thunderous wind that came sweeping into the place and it filled the entire house. And then each person there began speaking in their own native language while small tongues of fire rested above their heads. What a mess. What chaos. You know, I was a part of a Christmas Eve service one time where one of the ministers got their sleeve too close to the flame while lighting the Advent candle. The folks on the front row were, were shouting and they were talking so fast, it did sound like they were speaking in tongues. Our robes, of course, our robes are flame retardant, so the minister, the minister was just fine, it was all okay. But there was a few minutes there when there was chaos, there was absolute pandemonium. It means... There was just one person who was involved, and it was a mess. Yes, that same spirit, which in Hebrew, that word spirit is called ruach. That's a fun word to say. Say it with me, ruach. The same ruach that blew across the dark waters at the beginning of Genesis, that same ruach that breathed life into Adam and Eve, that same ruach that John the Baptist told us was coming. Remember what he said? I will baptize you with water, but he, he will baptize you with the holy ruach, the Holy Spirit. Yes, that same ruach came to breathe life into this disorganized gathering of faithful people just as Jesus said it would. Jesus told the disciples before he left, he said that, he said, you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ruach has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and in the ends of the earth. When the Holy Spirit shows up, well, the whole thing is a mess. And what made it such a mess was that the disciples, they weren't alone. They weren't the only ones there. DJ read it so well for us. He shared with us that there were Parthians and there were Medes and there were Elamites and there were residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Syria and visitors from Rome. It was a whole host of folks that were there, and all of them were hearing about God's deeds, God's works, and all were perplexed. That's what the text tells us. Oh, it was a mess, all right. And out of that mess, the church was born. And not only was the church born, but the author of Acts says it was inspirational, for they were all amazed, amazed and curious. 
What does this mean? They asked. What does it mean to be the church? Well, according to the author of Acts, it means being a mess because it means being in community with people that are different than you, people who speak differently than you, people who dress differently than you, people who eat different things than you, people who were raised differently than you, people who were educated differently than you, who enjoy different entertainment, different hobbies, different sports, different music than you. And we're all a little particular about our music, aren't we? Will Willimon, the former dean of Duke Chapel, was preaching at a church I was serving one Sunday, and he told a story about how one day after Sunday morning services, he was greeting folks in the front door as they were leaving. One of the grumpy old men in his congregation shook his hand and said bluntly, I didn't like that song we sang this morning. To which Dr. Willimon, who was never good at letting go of an opportunity to correct somebody's theology, replied to the grumpy old men, well, good, we weren't singing it for you. We were singing it for God. (laughs) Oh, the church, the church. There's nothing like it. This place where we are challenged and stretched, loved, supported. This place that, that teaches us how to care for others while at the same time being cared for. These people who who are so different from one another, and yet they are the ones that will teach you about God's mighty deeds and love you like family. But make no mistake about it, it'll be messy, maybe a little chaotic. It'll be amazing because that's where God dwells. You see, in Pentecost, God gives us the church, and and to be a part of the church, you don't have to to be like everybody else. You you don't have to to know all the answers to be a part of the church. To be a part of the church, you don't have to even believe all the same things. The only thing that you have to do, well, the only thing you really have to do is to be willing to put up with a little mess. That's the mess that comes from being together. And knowing that in the mess of being all together, God is found at the center of it, at the center of it all. But you know, you have to be a little curious. We're taking that art appreciation class. Our teacher offered extra credit if we went to a play that the acting department was putting on. And as I explained, I needed all the help I could get. So I went to get the extra credit. And then I learned that they were doing Our Town, that award-winning play by Thornton Wilder. I remember having to read excerpts of it in middle school or high school. I don't remember when it was, but I remember not being too excited about it, not enough action in it. But the play was wonderful. It's that play set in Grover's Corner, and the stage manager is the narrator. There are various characters all throughout it, but one of the main characters, her name is Emily Webb. Emily Webb, we see her in all three of the acts. And the play we are watching is is about her life growing up as as a child. We we watch her mature into teenagehood. We, We watch her meet her sweetheart, who she eventually marries. We watch the wedding, and in a twist of the plot, we also watch... Emily die, giving birth to her second child. It's a moving moment in the play. After the funeral, we find her spirit in the cemetery with a host of others who had recently died before her. And of course, it's a small town, so she she knows all of them well. And there's this moment when she is given the opportunity to go back to to rewatch just one day of her life. Her friends that are spirits, they they warn her, don't go back, don't watch, they tell her. But in this naive kind of way, she dismisses their warning and goes back to relive her 12th birthday, where she sees her parents, young and full of life. She sees loved ones that she has not seen in such a long, long time. She's confronted with the sheer beauty, the awe of her life, 
as she observes and she notices every sight, every sound, every thoughtful word, every kind embrace from a loved one. And suddenly she realizes, well, she realizes how good she had it. She becomes overwhelmed by, by how much she took her life for granted. She realizes that, that she never noticed it all. She never fully appreciated the gift that was in front of her for so long. And suddenly she realizes why the others had warned her. For she is faced with the time that she had squandered away. Friends, what if we could see what if we could see the blessings of our lives now? Look around. These faces that are with you now. These are the gifts of God. Church family friends that are here to, to love you and to support you, to care about you and for you, to pray for you and to remind you that you're not alone, that there is a God and this God loves you more than you can ever imagine. And that that same spirit of God, it's among us. That, that understanding, that gives us hope. And maybe, you know, just maybe, well, maybe that hope will give you a curiosity about the future. And, and I think that's important. It's important because there are some days, aren't there? There are some days when the future looks kind of scary, honestly. But what if instead of looking at the future with fear, we, we looked at it with curiosity. That's what the folks in the first church did. Instead of being afraid about the unchoreographed event, they were curious about it. What does this mean? They asked. You see, when, when we walk into the future with curiosity, then we walk into it with hope. And that makes the future seem just a little more certain because we know, we know that God is in it just like at the beginning of creation, just like at the beginning of the church, just like at the beginning of your life. God has always been present, and God loves you. Hallelujah. Amen.
I invite you to stand and let us affirm what it is that we believe using the affirmation of faith you find before you. The same spirit who inspired the prophets and the apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through scripture, engages us in the word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation and calls the women and men to all ministries of the church. In a broken and a fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, and to hear the voices of people long silence, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, come, Lord Jesus. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. You know, part of our role as being this church, being this kirche, this ecclesia, is, is caring for one another. And one of the ways this church does that all so well is by praying for those who have petitioned us to remember them before God. And so we create a space every Sunday in our worship where we invite you to, to lift up the names of those you would like for us to pray for. So we invite you to do that now. The casualties of war. For this Memorial Day weekend, the casualties of war, of those who paid the ultimate sacrifice, right? Thank you, Todd. Julie Rosenbaum. For Julie Rosenbaum. For Amanda David DeHaven. De Amanda DeHaven. For Gordon Binden. Thank you, Ms. Bent. Yes, Ruth. New for our new graduates. Yes, absolutely. Prayers for them. It's a lot to discern. For Fletcher Townsend. Thank you, Leslie. For Shirley Brown. Thank you, Arthur. We always ask that you would keep these, and certainly those that we've listed in the, in the worship bulletin and the emails, that you would keep them in your prayers this day, but also in the days and the weeks to come. Let us unite our hearts now in holy prayer. On this day of Pentecost, we offer thanks and praise to you, O God, 
We offer thanks for the might and the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. We offer thanks that that your spirit moved over the waters of creation. So may your spirit move over us. We offer thanks for for your spirit that that brought a people from bondage to freedom. We pray that that it may lead us still. We offer thanks that, that your spirit comes to us from your word in order to give life. And may your spirit give us life this day as the same Spirit continues to breathe new life into our congregation. In our world, O Lord, we hear so many voices all clamoring for authority and influence in our lives. Sometimes such noise can distract us from the constant whisper of your soft voice. May your Holy Spirit, may it lead us to hear the voice of Christ. For it is his voice that tells us we will always have life and that life in you is absolutely abundant. And by your spirit, we, we ask that you would continue to sustain us even when we feel confounded and crippled by powers and principalities, those that compete against us. Energize us and, and guide us again and again and again that, that even as an imperfect people, we we might still minister to others by showing your love, your compassion. Our Lord, during this Pentecost day, we recognize the praise that we bring to you in song. As a church, we was formed by so many voices. We are united by many stories that come together in one voice a voice that that crescendos in praise of the love you have shown to us. So we offer our song, O Lord, as an expression of our gratitude to you for our lives given by you, for you are our creator. We offer our song as as an expression of gratitude for, for our lives redeemed by your son, Jesus Christ, And then we offer our song and an expression of gratitude for for our lives lived as service through your Holy Spirit, that spirit that sustains us. (laughs) On this day of Pentecost, may your spirit enable us to sing a song, a song of love and in order that the world may sing a new song of hope. We offer this prayer. And the prayers that are are written so deep within our hearts, as together we pray, the prayer you, our Lord Jesus Christ, told us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. God tells us over and over in the Bible not to be afraid. Our gifts this morning are one way that we trust God, even in a world that that keeps telling us to be afraid. We let go of thinking that we are our own and live each day in grateful dependence on God. So may we continue to gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and in praise. Let us bring forth our tithes and our offerings.
<laughs> well done. Well done. Let us offer the prayer you find before you. God of all might and power, we thank you for creating the church by your spirit and breathing life into your people that we might be the body of Christ. Fill us with your life-giving spirit. Inspire us with the witness of those who have gone before and send us forth into your world to live Christ's life in courage and compassion. Take us and our resources, O oh God, and shape us according to your will in the service of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Let us stand and sing our closing song. We will go out with joy. My friends, as you go forth from this sacred space, go with the presence of the Holy Spirit and with the permission to be curious about what God is doing in you and through you and around you. And as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's countenance shine upon you and grant you peace now and forevermore in a world that truly has no end. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs>